Hi, welcome to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Uh, I'm Scott and today I'm going to do my February wrap. Um, I would normally do this with Nell, but Nell has only read one book this month and she doesn't didn't like it, so she doesn't want to be part of the February wrap just to say bad things about one book. Uh, she's got quite a few that she is reading, but she didn't finish them. Um, well, before I, I start on my wrap, I just want to say that this has been a, an amazing month for me. Last year, I read 151 books, and I gave five star ratings to just three books. Um, that's not to say it was a bad reading year, it's just that I don't really give out five star ratings. It has to really impress me to give out five star ratings, and in this month, there is three five star books. So, February 2020 is as good as 2019, if one wants to argue that. Uh, anyway, the first book I read is The Mysterious Affairs at Styles by Agatha Christie. It is the first Hercule Pyro book. I read this as an audiobook um, and I had the pleasure of listening to it being narrated by David Suchet. Uh, David Suchet is the actor who played Hercule Pyro in the uh, miniseries, TV series, movies, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I think that they were a series of movies, to be honest, but um, I don't actually remember. I remember watching them when I was much younger. Um, yeah, so anyway, having him be the voice was, was a treat, and um, obviously that accent that he can do for Pyro, I found very accurate, even though I'm sure somebody from Belgium would find that ridiculously offensive. Um, the last two Agatha Christie books I read, I gave five stars to, which, as you just saw at the front of this video, is something that is really rare. I was hoping to continue with the five stars for Agatha Christie and continue being surprised by simply how good a writer she is. Um, she has certainly really made me uh, appreciate the crime uh, genre a bit more. Um, unfortunately for, the, for me, this book, its narrator is a person called John, and he's a bit of an idiot, and I found that this style of, um, this style of writing to not be something I enjoyed as much as her other books. Um, I felt like there was three detectives on it. There was myself, a person of normal intelligence, there was Pyro, a genius, and there was this guy, an idiot. Um, and, uh, and, and I just, I, I found that quite irritating also, um, but, it, but it was a very good device for Agatha Christie to, um, to mislead you on what Pyro was doing and why he was doing certain things. Uh, in the end, I gave this book four stars. Um, quite a good book. Very much recommended this book. Not quite as good as the more famous Agatha Christie books that I have read, um, but still ultimately a very enjoyable read. Uh, and and as you saw at the start of the, book, the, the, the video, five stars does not. There's not many that get that. Um, after that, I moved on to The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. That's the second book in the Wheel of Time series. Um, I super enjoyed this book. Um, I had some issues with this book because Robert Jordan doesn't go into some details, certainly with the character of a Gawain and what happens to her. There are some issues there that would have been really powerful for Robert Jordan to spend a little bit of time discussing and maybe giving Gawain a couple of introspective scenes on that. And Robert Jordan sort of fast forwards through that because he's all about the plot. He's plot, plot, plot. Um, and, and that's just the style of book this is. Um, but when I finished this book, this is the second in a, in a hugely long series. When I finished this book, I didn't want to read any other book. I just wanted to go bang onto the third book. And I'd not really had that feeling for a long, long time that even everything that I thought could have been improved in this book 
it didn't matter because I just thoroughly enjoyed all the action and all the entertainment and I wanted to know what would happen next. Uh, and I didn't feel like the incident with Egwene and what happened to her was ignored. I just felt like it, I would have, if I was the writer, I would have given it more time and that's not the book he's writing and uh, that's not to say there's anything wrong with that. That's that's still the, you know, and, and so because I was so eager to start the third book in the series, I've given this five stars because I just don't get that feeling. I, I, I sit back and I look at the book and I go, geez, that was a good book, but I don't, that wanting to read more, I'm, I, I find it really easy to put down a series and, and go, I'm up to book two and I'll, I'll finish that in August. Um, the next book I read was for our book club, it was American Gods. Um, there will be a review up on this uh, where Nell and I get drunk. I apologise for the quality of that review. Reviewing books while you're drunk is maybe not the uh, cleverest thing if you want to be articulate. But the reason we decided to get drunk was because we both hated this book. It was absolutely terrible. One star, very disappointed in Neil Gaiman, aiming at an audience so so much below the level that I want to be reading at that I felt like I didn't get this book until I spoke to Nell about it and she said no what you can get in this book that is actually all there is in this book and um, that was really disappointing uh, then I picked up Margaret Atwood Oryx and Crake that's the first book in the Mad Adams trilogy um, and wow, this is, I thought this book was going to be the marker for the year when I was reading it. Just so incredible. Um, it is a story about, um, about a boy called, uh, Sandman. And, um, sorry, the story about a boy called Sandman. And he has two friends, Oryx and Craig and he talks about the life and how he interacts with them. Uh, telling you more really ruins it, which is a problem because I've not really told you enough to get into this. Uh, it is dystopian. It is a reflection of the current political corruption that we have. It tackles issues such as um, the, uh, such as genetic engineering, such as access to medicine, such as food security, and that is um, all current issues that we are facing a lot. And things like um, companies murdering uh, employees and stuff like that to, to keep secrets and to keep doing things in a certain way. Um, I have read The Handmaid's Tale and I've read The Testaments of Margaret Atwood, and I enjoyed both of those books, but I have to say, that after reading those books, I wasn't really sure what all the fuss was about Margaret Atwood as an amazing author, and I am well and truly on board the Margaret Atwood train now. She is incredible. This book, if you haven't figured out, five stars. Uh, just, just a brilliant dystopian novel, um, and not your typical dystopian novel. Uh, very good. Uh, I feel that that will probably get a review on this channel uh, a little bit later on. Um, then I read a book called Even Tree Nymphs Get the Blues by Molly Harper. This was a poor choice from me. I, I don't know why this book was on my TBR to begin with. I think I saw the title, said, oh, that's probably funny, and got it. Um, what I didn't know when I started reading this was this is... Um, a short novella in between the second and the third book in the Mystic Bayou series, a Bayou series rather, um, and and that was that was the wrong choice. I needed to actually read that from book one rather than from book two and a half. Um, that said, um, I was looking to read something easy. I was looking to read a bit of a comedy, and. I got a fantasy rom-com and I think when I say the title was Even Tree Nymphs Get the Blues, 
I think you probably have an idea in your head of the quality of this book and and what sort of book it is and and I can say that you're hundred percent right it does what it's trying to do well but ultimately it's not really trying to do a lot I gave it three stars um, it was amusing it wasn't the greatest book um, if you're looking for something light very quick very quick and easy to read then go for it um, every month I am trying to read an author from a country that I have not read before. Um, we did a geography video uh, a few weeks ago. Um, it's a tag video, so if you run a YouTube, a booktube station and you would like to do a tag video, we have a geography tag, which you are totally welcome to do. We would love it if you did it. Um, I found out in that tag that I had not read very many books from Africa um, and considering the abundance of good Nigerian authors out there and I thought that, that Nigeria would be a good easy one to, um, to give me some more African representation on my geography map. So I read Things Fall Apart by Chiwanba and Chibi. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm really sorry if I'm butchering that. I did not look that up. Um, and this was ultimately a book that I didn't really enjoy. Um, I can see what may have been trying to happen, but I didn't feel that it was happening. This is a book about the independence of Nigeria and the book about a man who is quite an abusive man uh, and his relationship with his wives uh, in the book. Um, it's a book that, to be honest, I'm already forgetting. Um, I, I've had such a good reading month and this book, I don't remember why I didn't really like it or why I should have liked it and it's only been less than a fortnight ago that I read it, which tells you everything that I think about this book. I will say that plenty of other people love this book, but something to do with the writing style really didn't quite do it for me. Um, so um, please don't be put off this book by my bad review. This is just my personal, uh, you know, my personal taste uh, to this writing style. Um, then after that, I read the third book in the Wheel of Time series, The Dragon Reborn. Uh, by Robert Jordan. Again, completely loved this book. Again, wanted to just continue on with this series. When I finished it, I uh, ended up giving this book four stars. I don't feel that this book was much different in quality to The Great Hunt. I feel like if I can give them half marks, then maybe they'd both get four and a half stars and one book has just slightly rubbed me better. Maybe it's got me on a better day and I've given it a five star. And the other book has uh, maybe got me on a slightly worse day, worse day and I've given it a four star. Um, I'm, really, I'm really loving the Wheel of Time series. I said to myself when I was planning to start the Wheel of Time series, one book a month and you just bang, go through it slowly and finish it because I don't want to just read The Wheel of Time for three months. I want to read other books as well. And look, there, I've broken the, rule, the, 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 the laws I've given with a, um, oh, by reading books two and three in February. So already breaking that rule uh, and probably will break that rule again. Very much enjoying this series. Uh, if you like epic fantasy, uh, then give it a shot, um, very much in the style of books like Lord of the Rings, um, good character development, lots of characters, lots of fun, um, and, and The Dragon Reborn uh, is just another good book. We get to see a bit more of the character Matt and he gets to develop in that book, um, but yeah, uh, and we get to see a bit more of The Forsaken too. Um, then the next book I read is just, wow, this is a good book. Um, Gail Honeyman, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. This is one of the best books I have ever, ever read. Um, uh, this is easily a five star. This 
This is above other five star books and this is the best book I've read of the year. Um, so while I thought Oryx and Crape was an amazing book when I read it and I thought that may be the best book I read all year, it didn't last very long and Gail Honeyman's Elephant, Eleanor Oliphant surpassed that book. Uh, Eleanor is a, um, is a woman in her very early 30s. She thinks differently uh, and it transpires that she's had quite a traumatic childhood and traumatic past and she makes friends with a, uh, a co-worker called Raymond and the relationship between Raymond and Eleanor is absolutely beautiful. This book is periodically very funny. Um, Eleanor's misunderstandings and, and stuff makes her character funny. It also makes her character the most endearing character you'll read in a long time. It's not a character that you will support and just want to be happy uh, more so than Eleanor. Um, she's, yeah, she's just just that character that it is hard to dislike and uh, Gail Honeyman does that from the start. Gail Honeyman's writing is so good. Um, I have a list of about 10 words in uh, a messenger conversation with my wife saying, oh my god, this word, this word, um, oleoginous for example, meaning oily and, uh, oily and, um, falsely complimentary. And, you know, when somebody says, oh, you're so smart, they are being oleoginous. And that's just one of the words that I have learnt from Gail Honeyman's tour de force that is Eleanor Oliphant. Um, if anybody has read that book and didn't like it, I would love to know. I'd love to know what you didn't like about that book. I just, I feel that there is something in this for everybody. It's heartwarming. It's funny. It's, it's dark. It's, it channel, uh, it, it, it discusses challenging topics. Um, and geez, it's a good book. Um, after that, uh, one of my goals is to read the book on my TBR that has been on there the longest or to DNF it and get it off there. Um, I very nearly DNF'd Charlotte Lennett's The Female Coyote. Um, the word female here could probably mean romance rather than adventure. Um, and Coyote as in Don Coyote. And this is a story about a girl who takes everything that people say to her as if she is in a romantic drama uh, and, uh, you know, a romantic book and completely makes things up and, and clearly hasn't read a romantic book at all in her life. So very similar to uh, the story of Don Quixote. If, um, and if you haven't read Don Quixote before you read this one, you probably should. And if you don't like Don Quixote, you'll no way ever like the female Quixote. Ultimately, this book could have been better, but it was poorly executed. It wasn't funny, and I have to say that a lot of that is probably to do with um, when it was written the, and the sense of humour and the language not quite translating uh, to a modern audience. But I also have to say that the ambition of the jokes were very, very low, and, um, and I gave this book just the one star, not very good. Uh, that brings me to my last book, which has slipped my mind. Oh, and this was a good book. Uh, the Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. Um, Noble Laureate Pearl S. Buck. Um, and this book, it takes place in China. Um, I read a review of this book on Goodreads of a Chinese-American accusing Pearl S. Buck of not knowing about Chinese culture and and not, you know, why did you need to set this book in China? But Pearl S. Buck actually lived in China for 20 years, so this was quite amusing that 
that a Chinese person living in America is accusing an American person who lives in China of not knowing China enough. And that is actually an interesting debate as to who would know China better, but completely irrelevant to this. Uh, this tells the story of a man and um, uh, of a man's life. Um, it starts with his um, marriage to his wife, uh, and it, it's the story of how he is poor and he farms the land and he becomes rich. Uh, and and this is a really uh, a lot of depth, a lot of multi layers in this book. It it sort of talks about good and evil, um, it talks about famine, what would you do to feed your family when there's no food, would you, would you sell one of your children into slavery to feed your food, would you kill one of your children and eat them to, to feed your other children, these sort of questions and, and it's really confronting in parts, uh, then it uh, also explores how money changes somebody and power changes somebody and the desire of power and um, and all that and examines love and and relationships like that um, very good book ultimately um, it wasn't the most enjoyable book though it was a little bit slow, a little bit boring in bits, um, but I can see why this book has uh, lasted the test of time. It was written in the 1930s, rather in 1930, uh, so that would make it 90 years old today. Not two books, so not too many books will be around after 90 years, so you have to give this book credit for being around, and it is, it is a good book and the topics it covers are timeless topics. Um, do recommend this book, uh, and that is a four star read. Well, that is the end of my January wrap. I also started The Secret History by Donna Tart and Wild Sagosa Seas by Jean Rhys. Um, and I just, I have not finished them yet, uh, so I've missed my deadline for my February wrap because it is now the 1st of March uh, when I'm filming this. Um, so I want to know what did you read during February, what uh, what did you like, what didn't you like during February, have you read any of the books I, I read, do you agree with my comments, do you disagree with my comments, uh, let me know. Uh, anyway I've been Scott, uh, remember ideas are more powerful, they're more powerful than being forced to eat your children. Bye.